from Mind Force Radio. This is Natural Strength Night with Maximum Bob. On Natural Strength Night, we don't talk about the other things Bob likes to talk about. Tonight, we only talk strength training. When I say strength training, I don't mean training like punk-ass goons in the muscle magazines who jacked up on juice, steroids, and PEDs. I mean natural strength. Strength built on good food, heavy weights, and no shortcuts. If you want to learn about real natural strength, weight training the right way, the old school way, stick around. Bob and his friends just might teach you something. He's here, the host of Natural Strength Night, Maximum Bob Whalen. Our two guests tonight are going to be Dick Connor and Drew Israel. But um, one of the biggest problems we have today is there's too much information. There's information overload. So in a way, it's better because, you know, 30, 40 years ago, they didn't have hardly any information out there. I mean, uh, unless you were one of the lucky few that knew about it. But on average, most people didn't know anything about training. Now, you've got so much information, even if you're good intention, you can't. You know, you, you can get so screwed up and mixed up that you don't even know what's true and what isn't true. So we're going to try to help you simplify things and, uh, and give you the truth so you don't make some of the same mistakes that we made. So uh, I'm going to go over a few short things here, just lay a good training foundation before I introduce Dick Connor, the first guest. So uh, there's a lot of people out there who have been training a long time but are still basically beginners because through no fault of their own, they may have been flailing away at the gym for years and years and years, but they're just moving things around. That's what I say. A lot of, a lot of lifters are just like bricklayers. They're doing manual labor. They don't keep track of what they're doing. They don't keep records. They just pull the pin and uh, on the machine and they just move stuff around. And they just think that because they're sweating, uh, you know, they had a good workout, but then they wonder why they're not getting bigger and stronger. Many trainees are in a rut, and they don't understand why. They think they have the wrong supplements, and they want to waste money on even more. <laughs> or they think they need to spend more time in the gym when they're already going there five and six days a week, when it's usually the exact opposite. They have to go to the gym less. They just need to work harder and heavier, but go less. So before we get started, I just want to make a quick note on supplements because it may sound to people sometimes that I'm anti-supplement, but I'm not anti-supplement. I do take some things like krill oil, cardio for life. I take vitamin D, vitamin C, a few other things. But I look at it differently. I take supplements as an insurance policy for health to back up my food diet. Okay? So what I don't like are the supplements that promise to get you bigger and stronger and more cut these are what I call performance supplements, okay? So there's a difference between health insurance policy supplements versus performance supplements that are trying to do what steroids do. And then, you know, usually those are the BS supplements that the vitamin companies are pimping the drug users to sell. So, uh, you know, we'll be going a lot over a lot of this stuff today to uh, help you avoid wasting your money. Uh, there's some of you out there that uh, that are, you know, you've been training for years and years and years, but you spend 45 minutes bench pressing with nine other guys. You have, you know, you lift your butt off the bench when you bench. You bounce the bar off your chest. You take way too long rest between sets, so you spend three hours in the gym. Um, you only do the easy exercises, like the cable crossovers and the tricep kickbacks. You only do leg extensions for your legs or, or no legs at all because you do cardio. Or you do the, the pec deck machine, but you never squat, ever. Or you use the squat rack to do your curls in. So these are some of the things we're going to be uh, you know, talking about tonight. Okay, so here it is in a nutshell. Because, you know, we could go over this stuff and try to make it complicated, but it really isn't. It's really simple. The simple formula, in a nutshell, is progressive strength training plus good food with plenty of protein plus adequate recovery equals results. And it's so easy. It could be a Geico commercial. You know, <laughs> even a caveman could do it. But it, it is that easy. It's simple formula. It's you lift heavy weights and you try to lift heavier weights. You eat good food. You get enough recovery. And that's it. 
So I'm going to give you 10 tips. The first tip is stop reading the muscle magazines. Okay, they're crap. Uh, just about everything in there is a bunch of BS trying to sell you supplements. And you got to remember one thing. What we do is a different activity than what they do. Okay, what we do is natural training. We're not doing drug training. We're a different species than them. Okay, the goons are a different species than us. Okay, we don't do what they do. So don't compare yourself. Don't compare your training to what they do. Because without drugs, you won't be able to do it. So you got to realize that 99% of the big names in bodybuilding and the iron game since the early to mid 60s have used steroids. It's as common as marijuana. It's common. So number two, overtraining and lack of recovery. They might be the most common training mistake people are making. So don't confuse training hard with training more. Okay, training more is not always better. Usually it's worse. Okay, the next thing, the myth of body part training. A lot of people think they're more advanced because they break their workouts down into body parts. It's not advanced. It's been around since the 50s. And usually when I meet someone, I think they're a beginner when they talk about body parts. They just picked up their first issue of Muscle and Fiction magazine, and then they, they think they're advanced. So, you know, hopefully we can straighten you guys out. The next thing is balanced routines, okay? You should have an equal emphasis on pushing and pulling. A lot of guys have ego lifts, what I call ego lifts. They put too much emphasis on one lift, and it's usually the bench press. And the bench press is a good lift, but a lot of people think they had a good workout if they had a good bench workout. No, I mean, I, I like doing bench press too, but it's not the most important lift. It shouldn't even be the ego lift. There, there's, there's, uh, it's only one lift. It, it, you know, a, 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 bend, a bend of a row is just as important as the bench press. So don't get hung up. Uh, don't get your ego hung up on one lift. Okay, the next thing, work your legs. Your legs are not strong because you run or do Stairmaster. I see guys all the time saying, I don't need to work my legs. Uh, you know, I, I, I ride my bike. <laughs> well, that's cardio. So they're not going to get strong doing that no matter what you do. So work your legs. Don't be a flamingo. Okay. <laughs> we always like to joke about flamingo. And anyone who calls in, if you have any funny flamingo sightings, uh, would love to hear about it. Uh, the next the next tip is exercise selection. Do the hard exercises. There is no exercise that you must do. If you have medical reasons, you know, don't feel like you have to squat or you have to do something. I mean, if something bothers you, you, you don't have to do it. But you should focus on doing the hard exercises if you can. The compound multi-joint exercises. It doesn't mean you can't do the isolation exercises. You can. You can you know, what I call them, their dessert. The main meal, the main meal, the meat and potatoes is the, the multi-joint compound, okay? If you want to add the isolation to it, then that's fine. Uh, results are about intensity, and intensity is the amount of work per unit of time. So remember, the unifying factor that make all strength training methods work is progression. You can do slow training. You can use barbells, you can use kettlebells, you can lift sandbags, you can do anything as long as you're trying to progress to, you know, a heavier poundage, you're not just staying with the same weight forever, you're trying to get stronger, then you'll get results. Um, going to failure, there's four ways, it's progression by poundage, by going to muscular failure, by using stricter form, and by reducing the rest between sets, all four of those things in, increase your intensity. So stop, look, stop looking for gimmicks and shortcuts and miracle formulas. Just focus on working hard and progressively on the basic exercises, and you should be on your way to results. Uh, the, the final tip is keep a training log. Okay, keep a training log. So many guys don't do that. I mean, you should keep a training log. When you go to the gym, write everything down. A lot of times you don't realize something if you don't write it down. Something could be causing you, you to get injured, or you might, you know, you won't, you won't keep track of your your poundages. There's a, you know, there's a ton. Of, almost everybody I know that's serious, they keep a training log. So do that. Uh, also, read the old classic books. 
the books like Super Strength by Alan Calvert and The Key to Might and Muscle by George Jowett. There's a, a ton of good books at physicalculturebooks.com. And there's a, some other good websites you should be reading. Um, my website, naturalstrength.com, but there's also uh, a few other good ones out there, cyberpump.com and hardgainer.com. They're, they're great websites. And Stuart is putting all the old issues of Hardgainer into digital format now. So uh, you should go on hardgainer.com and, and get all the back issues of Hardgainer if you don't have them. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to introduce our, our first guest tonight. It's Dick Connor. And uh, almost everybody out there who's been lifting knows who Dick Connor is. He's an internationally known strength expert and one of the most respected men in the iron game. He has been coaching for several decades, running one of the best hardcore gyms in the country, the Pitt in Indiana. And he was the coach of the Pitt powerlifting team that won numerous drug-tested powerlifting championships. They won 19 state championships and nine national championships. Dick has also written many articles for Hard Gainer magazine and my website, naturalstrength.com. He has loved the iron game and strength training since the early 1950s. And while stationed in the Navy at San Diego, he trained with Leo Stern, the same man who trained the famous Bill Pearl. So, Dick, welcome aboard. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. And just want to say I wished I'd have heard what you just said when I started. What a bunch of good information for a young man to grasp hold of and save himself a lot of injuries and see some gains. Man, it's just marvelous what you said. I wish, again, it almost hurts my feelings to look back well, on my life thank and you, see all those things. Well, Dick, to start things off, why don't you tell us... Um, when, where, and how you started training? Well, I go back to 1953. I, I got, got my first set of weights, and I, I wrestled in high school and didn't uh, train long with the weights uh, before I joined the Navy. I joined the Navy in 1955, and I did some training. And then... While in the Navy, I run into a guy who played softball on an air, uh, aircraft carrier I was on and uh, run into a weightlifter. I'd really never seen anybody like him and ask him some questions, and he directed me and helped me for a while, and then he says, I, I can't, I'm not interested anymore. you got to do it yourself, which I found it very hard. I had to go to the gym by myself and eventually ended up on a cruise in the Philippines, in a gym over there, a guy told me, he says, when you get back to the States, go to Leo Stern's gym. He said, that's the best place to go. And so from Leo's, uh, it just took off. I just learned well, what hey, I could from there. Hey, Dick, while we're on Leo right here, before we progress, why don't you spend a few minutes and really uh, give us some good detailed information about what it was like training with Leo? Well, Leo was a little bit like a Vince Lombardi. Um, he, he, in those days, people who run the show, coached, would be completely different than if you went in a place nowadays. You'd done it his way; it was a highway. He, you know, he, he he was that kind of a guy. He had trained. Well, while I was training there, there was a guy. The first guy I ever seen in my life of that ilk was a guy named Bill Golumbic, and. Bill Golumbic was fifth in Mr. America that year, and at that time it, you, you you either got first, second, third, or fourth, or fifth. And Mr. America was the biggest contest in um, in uh, probably the world, except the Mr. Universe in Europe. But uh, I seen him jump all over him because he's doing something wrong. He wanted it done a certain way, and so I kind of <laughs> stayed away from him. Uh, although he made my workout for me, told me what to do. And, was he a little and, and bit I like, tried to do it. Was he a little bit like Vince Gironda? Yeah, well, you know, I met Vince, too. <laughs> they, they were both kind of like that, right? <laughs> like yeah, yeah that. Leo, Vince was a little more probably, you know, uh, like a movie star type guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you know, and, but Bill Pearl now, he was, um, I trained at his gym, too. 
and he w- was a great guy to be around. He, I, though, though he said when I first joined, I joined with another guy. He says, are you guys going to work out or are you just going to mess around? I thought, my goodness, he's selling a membership and he's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'd paid him yet. He just put it to us like it was. And so, you know, you just got to respect all three of those people we just talked about. They all had their effect. And um, and then after you know, um, Leo, and uh, tell us some of the highlights of your training. Well, you know, I, I, I've been in so many gyms uh, in my life. Probably one of the best I, I, I spoke to you about before was on that island in the Navy where I trained for a year. I was on an island in the Marshall Islands, and they had a, some guys that built a gym there that was really outstanding for its time. Wouldn't be anything now, but was really outstanding for its time. And I just really had a great time there being around guys uh, and so on and so forth. But like you just said, uh, I, I didn't understand at that time overtraining. And I overtrained almost to the point of sickness. Uh, you know, my body couldn't handle the training we were doing. And I just couldn't understand, you know, the amount. And nobody ever spoke to me at, partic- at that time about the intensity and the amount uh, to the point where I could understand it that really got across to me was the editor of uh, Iron Man magazine because of his own tribulations and trials. Perry Rader, you know, went from a longer workout to a very brief, you know, he'd done a workout twice a week where he'd done a 20 rep squat. And if I remember right, he'd done a press or a press behind the neck mm-hmm. and a chin up and, or bent over row. That's all he did, and he said he made his greatest gains, but I still couldn't buy into it. I couldn't understand it. And, uh, again, most people I train today, you know, I train so extremely brief um, that I don't know if I could do it myself back, you know, if I'd had somebody talking with me and trying to make sense to me. It's just what you – again, it's what you just said – is what makes sense. I, I, I just w- would encourage any young person listening to what you said to really grab grab hold of it. I mean, there's nothing you said I disagreed with. And I'm not selling a thing. Uh, you know, I still oh. train people. I don't really care whether any, I train anybody new. I got all the people I want. And I don't, you know, I'm 77 years old and um, what have you. But it's... You know, weight training is one of the great joys of life. I, I, the only yeah. Another thing I would say, adding to what you said, was look at it as a joy. It, it, it is a, it, it's a great time when you learn how to train right. We'll be back with more right after this. This segment brought to you by VitalNutritionStore.com. Did you know that more than 7 million Americans suffer from coronary heart disease, the most common form of heart disease? Regardless of your age or condition, adding Cardio for Life to your daily regime will dramatically improve your cardiovascular condition. Cardio for Life has been the top-selling Enlarger 9 product in the marketplace now for more than three years. It is also the top-selling product at VitalNutritionStore.com. Formulated by Dr. Harry Elwart, the best-selling author of Let's Stop the Number One Killer of Americans Today, Dr. Harry believes together we can prevent and reverse heart disease. Cardio for Life comes in three wonderful flavors, orange, peach, and grape, and is gluten-free, sugar-free, and sodium-free. Please see our complete line of natural products at vitalnutritionstore.com. That's V-I-T-A-L nutritionstore.com. Randy Roach shocked the world with the release of his first volume of Muscle Smoke and Mirrors several years ago. It was a masterpiece of over 500 pages with such in-depth research and detail that it was not only surprising, but shocking and mind-blowing. It was truly one of the best Iron Game history books ever written. He followed that with Volume 2, another epic book with over 700 pages of equal depth and detail. All serious Iron Game fans need to have these books. 
please visit Randy's website at randyroach.ca. That's R-A-N-D-Y-R-O-A-C-H dot C-A. Listen to how Iron Game legend and the Iron Master editor, Osmo Kihaw, describes the book Supernatural Strength. Have you ever wondered how much real-world experience authors have when they write books about weight training? Who is that person behind the computer? What do they really know about the Iron Game? If you picked up this book, Supernatural Strength, you have definitely come to the right place. The author, Bob Whalen, has spent several decades in the Iron Game trenches training himself, competing and coaching in powerlifting, earning academic credentials too numerous to mention, and thousands of hours of training and instructing athletes and trainees of all levels at his Washington, D.C. gym since 1990. He's not only devoted his life to motivating and pushing people to heights they have never been to, but elevating the trainees' understanding why certain methods work better than others. Bob is one of the most respected and revered trainers in the business today. This book is sure to surprise and amaze you at the same time. Order now at SupernaturalStrength.com. That's SupernaturalStrength.com. Don't you think it would be so much easier getting into shape if you had a personal coach? Just like all the celebrities do. Well, now you can. Bob Whalen of WebStrengthCoach.com wants to get you out of your rut and coach you to success. He's dedicated to helping you achieve your strength and fitness goals through your hard work and his expert guidance. Bob will help you with strength training, muscle building, fitness, nutrition, and motivation. He'll make sure you achieve your maximum physical potential. You can get one-on-one training with Bob through his website webstrengthcoach.com he will develop a personalized program tailored to your individual needs a program right for you bob will give you feedback after every workout this is old school fitness and nutrition no fads and no gimmicks bob will use proven natural techniques to make sure you are satisfied so visit webstrengthcoach.com today and let bob help you reach your best self webstrengthcoach.com Do you enjoy history without social engineering? Reading about our founding fathers? Economics from a capitalist perspective? Wisdom from modern patriots? Welcome to UncleSamBooks.com, where virtues like rugged individualism, hard work, and the American dream dominate. UncleSamBooks.com. Great books for homeschooling. UncleSamBooks.com. If you want to become as strong and muscular as possible with health in mind and without lowering yourself to using steroids, the best advice can be found in the classic strongman books of long ago. These are the best books ever written on the subjects of strength training, weightlifting, strongman training, iron game history, and old time physical culture. Many of them can still be found at physicalculturebooks.com. There you will find good, Honest, time-tested wisdom from the great old-time strong men. To maximize your natural muscular and strength potential, please visit physicalculturebooks.com. Listen to Ken Manny, head strength and conditioning coach at Michigan State University, describe the book Iron Nation, a masterpiece text on some of the most intriguing and compelling personal stories, iron game history, and gut-wrenching training routines ever put to paper. If you truly love hard training without all the frills of pomp and circumstance so common today, you will love Iron Nation. Written by lifters for lifters. If you love weight training, you will love Iron Nation. Order now at ironnation.com. That's I R O N nation.com. If you would like to promote your business on MindForce Radio, we would love to hear from you. Please let us know if you are interested in a 30 or 60 second voice commercial or a banner website ad. Please contact Bob using the contact information provided on MindForceRadio.com. You're listening to Natural Strength Night on MindForce Radio.
you know, again, going back to where what you said, it's it's a great deal of what you, what you said. I mean, you said a lot to a young person. But if anything they could do to get hold of that information would be a, a tremendous asset to them. If they're if they're fumbling around, if you're struggling with what you, uh, you know, believe, you got to believe in what you're doing. You know, again, I didn't I didn't know how to, to 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 get to the place where I believed in what I was doing. One day it was this, one day it was that, and even though I trained around and in these places where these guys give you good information, uh. I'd listen to ever Tom, Dick, and Harry, and you really have to be careful, you know. Uh, e- even though, you know, you respect a guy, um, you-, you still have to train yourself to some degree. And I know exactly what you mean. And so- sometimes you learn by accident. I mean, right. you're told over and over again, and you, you don't listen. Because you told me earlier the same thing happened to you. It, it also happened to me because Perry Rader was talking for years about cutting back to twice a week. And we both heard him say it. And we both read about it for years before we took the advice. And I was in the military, too, when I, uh, by, not by choice, you know, because I, I was put on shift work. You know, I had an mm-hmm. eight hour I had an eight hour a day job and that's when I was over training. Cause I mean, just about every afternoon I was in the gym working out. Um, and then I got put on the shift work where I had to work 24 on and 24 off. And, uh, so with that shift at first, I was all upset and I thought I was going to get a lot weaker. Cause I think I was like 22 at the time. And, uh, so to my surprise, I got way stronger. All my lifts went way up. So, then the stuff Perry was saying began to sink in, and I cut back even more. And then from that point on, I was hooked. I said, that, you know, that for drug-free, this is the way to go. Yeah, um, but still, you understand. You, 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 I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't for for so long. I'd done it with other people better than I could ever do it with myself. I, I finally understood enough to train other people better than I could ever train myself. I remember one time putting 20 pounds on my bench and 20 pounds on the overhead press in one month with a wow. workout that I had forced myself to try, but I couldn't stay with it. It's just hard to believe that a guy can make, and, and I'm talking about after I'd been training for about 10 years and wow. I, it was hard to make gains. And in 30 days, I made the best gains I'd made in several years on, hmm. on those two lifts and others too. Yet I couldn't stay with it because for some reason I couldn't understand a brief hard workout as much as, and I, I really believe that I was addicted to the pump. Wow. That's, all, that's the only reason, you know, I, why didn't I stay with it? I seen the gains on a brief hard workout, yet I just kept drifting. Now I can do it better with other guys. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, there's nobody that I trained. I, I trained some powerlifters now, and the one powerlifter that I just trained Friday evening, he, you know, his workout takes about 35 minutes twice a week, and we're talking, to, you know, a, a, he, he's. A, I know he's pretty old for a powerlifter. He's 65 years old, but he competes. He just competed two weeks ago. He wow. loves to powerlift. He's pretty good for his age and so on and so forth but uh i can train him that way and he'll go along with me because he thinks i know something you know i wish somebody had got that across me but i just couldn't it took me years to understand a brief hard workout so if, 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 if i can learn anything from this program uh i, I would and, beg uh, you to, to, to learn that and dick why don't you um explain how you have tried many methods and how you uh, you spend a lot of time even doing slow training and how it's beneficial and the proper way to do it. Uh, I, I believe in the slow training. Yes, I do. And of course, uh, slow could mean different things to different people as to how slow. But uh, you know, I just believe that you you want to keep the weight under load continually. 
I, you know, I, I, there's there's certain lifts I don't put. A, I'm not saying they won't make you stronger. I'm I'm not saying a power clean don't make you stronger, but I just don't like the the movement for for different reasons. And uh, it, you know, uh, I, I do know power lifters who have done damage because of explosive squats and and, and explosive deadlifts. In other words, jerking and yanking on them. You gotta do. You gotta have proper technique. And, you know, you, if you're going to do the best movements, then you should learn proper technique. It should, you should spend some time doing that. Uh, again, I had problems with that when I trained, and I didn't pay attention. Yeah. How do you train your power lifters? Do you, you have a regular power lifting routine with them, but then you do um, a series of um, assistance work with them like this? If you do slow training with a power lifter, you still have them do the basic lifts, but you do some slow assistance work. Is that how you do it? Right. It's, that's basically, I just, right now, if I, if I train any power lifter, uh, or any power lifter I train, and I'm just training a couple now because uh, the time I've spent training other people, um, that are not powerlifters, and I gave up the powerlifting part. You know, I don't own a gym any longer. I just train people there. And I tried to get, be honest with you, tried to get away from powerlifting. But now I kind of wish that I kept a few guys and continued to train even more. I've picked up these two, and I probably will be training more in the future. But, uh, you know, I used to do fairly high reps on the squat or bench or deadlift, but I cycle those three lifts. In other words, I'll teach a guy to do his squat with start off and do a couple sets of warm ups and then a couple sets of threes. Good technique. You know, really is trying to squeeze that out of this guy, you know, to, to understand if he don't have good technique and get deep enough in any contest, he's going to have troubles. And then, for instance, on, on the guy I trained uh, Friday, uh, he done a deadlift, and then we do the hammer deadlift afterwards. After we do the regular deadlift, he done three reps on a deadlift, and after we warmed up, and then he does a hammer deadlift fairly slow, and uh, uh, just a few other movements. And that's it. We'll train a little core. We'll, as they call it nowadays, <laughs> you know, <laughs> ab work and the low back. And I, I also like to train a little shoulder work all the time with power lifters because they got to hold a bar on their back. They need to strengthen up the rear deltoid area. And mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're doing a bench press and what have you at rear deltoid, and the deltoids need to be kept strong. But just a few assistance exercises um, is all I ever recommend and I never train a powerlifter over twice a week I used to train powerlifters three times a week and when I mm-hmm. look back we was laughing about it not too long ago down there deadlifting twice a week at one time I thought my goodness no we were squatting twice a week and deadlifting like twice a week and all that kind of thing and we was laughing about it yeah I remember when you came to uh, you drove all the way from Indiana to go to some of my clinics in Washington, D.C., and you used to give the best talks. And uh, that's why after the break, I said just push the button because, like, remember we used to jo- joke about that. If you ever want to kill an hour, all you got to do is push the button with Dick. And Dick is <laughs> up there. And Dick is like a robot. You just push the button and Dick talks, you know? So that's well, you I know, this is all I know much about, and that's all I've ever hung around, you know? Uh, I've built gyms, literally. I built one down at Fort Campbell. I was a paratrooper. You know, I was in the Navy. I got out of the Navy. I joined the Army, and I enlisted airborne and and so on and so forth. And I, I built gyms in the Army. I snuck weights on that aircraft carrier because back in the 50s they didn't like weightlifters everybody was down on weightlifters and, you know people don't realize how far this stuff has come and you know uh, we got more weightlifters in this town than they had in america back then that's and, right uh, but you know on that aircraft carrier i snuck them on in a sea bag i had a, a, <laughs> it's a little at a time naturally <laughs> So, Dick, I remember one of the most interesting things you said at one of the clinics you came to. 
you gave a, a great example of a 350 pound bencher, okay, in, in the pit. And you were telling me these, these stories of these natural 350 pound benchers who that was their max. They couldn't do more, but they could, they could get about 350 cleanly. Uh, but then that same 350 pound bencher would be benching over 500 pounds at the next powerlifting meet with drugs and these unbelievably triple ply, you know, uh, bench shirts they have now. So now my last clinic, I think it was 10 years ago. So, uh, f fill in the, uh, the listeners here on how much of a difference and what a joke it is now in powerlifting, especially, I think the only legitimate lift now is the, the deadlift because you can't cheat too much with the, it, well, you can still cheat with drugs, but it's not going to affect that lift as much as, as the other two. But especially the right. bench press, it, it's affected so much with these these phony bench shirts. You can't even get them on without three people helping you get them on. You can't even bend your arms. I mean, the the it it, it, it practically helps bounce uh, uh, 150 pounds up by itself. So uh, uh, fill us in on that, Dick. Well, you cannot exaggerate it. But you unexaggerated it. I won't say what the guy does for a living, but I asked another guy a, a second time, if I remember right, because the first time I couldn't believe what I heard. The guy could bench 295, not three something. He could bench wow. 295 without a shirt and 500 with it. And we're talking <laughs> 15 what years ago. They, they, they got things now that's just unbelievable i mean i told a guy the other day i says if you run a hundred yard dash in 10 flats you got to run a hundred yards right yes well don't you understand i said for instance at the pit barbell club which has got a lot of equipment for powerlifters so it attracts those people there's no reason for a guy to train anywhere in evansville uh powerlifting because they don't have the equipment. They don't want powerlifters. The pit does, and they, they, I, I, mainly me, spent lots of money to equip that gym for powerlifting. And to find a 400-pound bencher that doesn't take steroids or doesn't use equipment is a rare d dude. Now, I'm telling you. They're just not around, and I'm talking about doing it by the rules. So you got to run a hundred yards in a hundred yard dash. You got to pause on the chest and keep your hips on the floor and feet on the floor. Now some of these organizations have got now you can get on your toes, you know. But right. what that does is give you, a, a, you know, a, a, you can get a tighter arch. But then to really lay on the bench and bench 400 pounds, there's two guys at the pit can do that. One can do 405. He weighs about 275. I asked him the other day what he weighed, uh, and I train him. And the other one is an outstanding lifter, and he probably can bench. He might be able to bench four yet. Uh, he's gotten a little age on him since he first started powerlifting. There. But to find a boxcar load of powerlifters that can bench 400 pounds, I mean, when you see the magazines, you're talking 1,000-pound benches, but, but, but you're talking about – equipment that's almost unbelievable you got to be a real man just to get the bar to your chest wow and hope it and and i i seen one of our lifters i seen him put on a bench shirt at a contest because a guy talked him into it and he ripped his shoulder i mean my goodness he had a, a extreme uh surgery and 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 later uh and, and just recently has had more of it Wow. Because of, of the, it, you know that that stuff is all about ego. It's not about protecting your body like these people want to tell you that sell that stuff. It's all about being able to lift twice as much as you can really lift. Wow. Or more. Yeah, I was just reading one of your articles, your um, old hard gainer articles, and I was getting a chuckle because you were only like 61 back then, and you were saying how most of the guys don't listen to you and. uh you, you you get a chuckle when you keep seeing them make the same mistakes, and you said that you uh, you finally stop wasting your energy with people because you know most of the young guys don't listen. So, but you concentrate all your energy on the ones that do listen. But it was a really good article. 
Yeah, I, I'm probably bad in that respect. I guess you just, when you get old, you get to be grumpy. And, you know, if a kid asks me a legitimate question, I'm definitely going to help him because I'm there myself thinking the same thing. But I remember Leo Stern jumping on me. I said, I wanted to, I said something about an exercise he put me on. I asked him to help me with something, and he did. Then I told him I wanted something else, and he said, listen, boy. And, I mean, he told me. It was a tricep exercise. He says, <laughs> and I said, I don't want a chest exercise. He says, that ain't no chest exercise. It's a tricep exercise. So I didn't ask him anything else. I was scared of him. And that was the best thing for me, to be scared of somebody, because I have to listen better. But, yeah. I, you know, I, I watch guys every time I'm at the gym and think, my goodness, if these guys would only take a few good movements and work hard, what they could get out of it. But uh, yeah, um, in in my opinion, the steroid problem is at an all time high right now. It's so common. I think it's, I, I would say, uh, I don't want to say how, what percent, but I mean, a huge percent of people are taking it, not just competitors. Just you know, regular people walking around. I, I think there's more people using it now by far than ever. I think it's just another accepted thing, you know. Uh, it is. This, it, it, it just I like it, if it, you go back in the '50s in this nation, what did this nation accept in a lot of areas? Right. To what it would accept now? It's not a positive thing to accept everything that comes along and be just whatever you want to be. You know, say, oh, well, that's all right because it's we want to all treat everybody equal. Well, if you're seeing a guy killing himself, maybe you ought to try to help him not to do so. Yeah, that's why I say yeah. we're a different species because we're we're not doing the same activity. Um, right. If you're lifting without it, it's not the same activity. I mean, you know, if if, if a guy's benching over 500 and he's really a 295 bencher, then what's the point? Like, what's the point of even talking about it? Yeah, it's crazy. It's now, beyond Dick, it's me. A, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, at, at the pit, because you still, you, you still train people there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You were just there today, I, right, training some people? Yeah, yeah well, I, I, this guy drives almost three hours from Illinois with his son, and his son's an outstanding football player. And I've been training his son. In fact, he named his son after me. <laughs> his name's Connor. Is... <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, and, and he so he brings Connor over, and Connor's a, you know he's a six foot two, two hundred and twenty pound linebacker that's a junior, and he broke his ankle last year, but he's getting back again. But he drives all the way to train, and so um, you know I, I I go out of my way for the guy, and I tra- his dad was on my powerlifting team, so oh, wow. you know it's just something I. <laughs> I get more out of training somebody like that, I guess, now at this stage. You know, again, I'm in a different situation than other people because of how I've made my living, you know. And um, so you can yeah, – I have a little more freedom as to do what I want to do. But I, I get really discouraged at the gym watching guys do things that I think is – and like you said, it, it guys will come up to me and say – man, is that guy on steroids? I almost say, can't you look and see? Didn't you see him last <laughs> month? <laughs> you remember what he used to look like here for 10 years? And then all at once he looks like this? Oh, hey, Dick, hold that thought, okay? We'll be right back. Okay. Listen to how Iron Game legend and the Iron Master editor, Osmo Kihaw, describes the book Supernatural Strength. Have you ever wondered how much real-world experience authors have when they write books about weight training? Who is that person behind the computer? What do they really know about the Iron Game? If you picked up this book, Supernatural Strength, you have definitely come to the right place. The author, Bob Whalen, has spent several decades in the Iron Game trenches training himself, competing and coaching in powerlifting, earning academic credentials too numerous to mention, and thousands of hours of training and instructing athletes and trainees of all levels at his Washington, D.C. gym since 1990. He's not only devoted his life to motivating and pushing people to heights they have never been to, but elevating the trainees understanding why certain methods work better than others. Bob is one of the most respected and revered trainers in the business today. This book is sure to surprise and amaze you at the same time. Order now at SupernaturalStrength.com. That's SupernaturalStrength.com. 
Don't you think it would be so much easier getting into shape if you had a personal coach? Just like all the celebrities do. Well, now you can. Bob Whalen of WebStrengthCoach.com wants to get you out of your rut and coach you to success. He's dedicated to helping you achieve your strength and fitness goals through your hard work and his expert guidance. Bob will help you with strength training, muscle building, fitness, nutrition, and motivation. He'll make sure you achieve your maximum physical potential. You can get one-on-one training with Bob through his website webstrengthcoach.com he will develop a personalized program tailored to your individual needs a program right for you bob will give you feedback after every workout this is old school fitness and nutrition no fads and no gimmicks bob will use proven natural techniques to make sure you are satisfied so visit webstrengthcoach.com today and let bob help you reach your best self webstrengthcoach.com Do you enjoy history without social engineering? Reading about our founding fathers? Economics from a capitalist perspective? Wisdom from modern patriots? Welcome to UncleSamBooks.com, where virtues like rugged individualism, hard work, and the American dream dominate. UncleSamBooks.com. Great books for homeschooling. UncleSamBooks.com. If you want to become as strong and muscular as possible with health in mind and without lowering yourself to using steroids, the best advice can be found in the classic strongman books of long ago. These are the best books ever written on the subjects of strength training, weightlifting, strongman training, iron game history, and old time physical culture. Many of them can still be found at physicalculturebooks.com. There you will find good, Honest, time-tested wisdom from the great old-time strong men to maximize your natural muscular and strength potential. Please visit physicalculturebooks.com. Listen to Ken Manny, head strength and conditioning coach at Michigan State University, describe the book Iron Nation, a masterpiece text on some of the most intriguing and compelling personal stories, iron game history, and gut-wrenching training routines ever put to paper. If you truly love hard training without all the frills of pomp and circumstance so common today, you will love Iron Nation. Written by lifters for lifters. If you love weight training, you will love Iron Nation. Order now at ironnation.com. That's I R O N nation.com. If you would like to promote your business on MindForce Radio, we would love to hear from you. Please let us know if you are interested in a 30 or 60 second voice commercial or a banner website ad. Please contact Bob using the contact information provided on MindForceRadio.com. You're listening to Natural Strength Night on MindForce Radio. Dick, thank you so much, and uh, I'm going to have you stay on for the final segment, and we're going to do like a a roundtable here. I want Drew to come on here and talk about equipment and uh, and get your input also. So just feel free to talk, uh, you know, make comments with Drew, okay? Okay. And uh, Drew is uh, well known in the field. He's internationally known as a strength expert. He's uh, the co-author of Iron Nation. He's uh, uh, so he's written lots of articles for Natural Strength and Hard Gainer magazine. One of the strongest drug-free guys in the world you'll ever find. He's uh, he knows more about equipment and machines than anyone I know. My good friend Drew, the Human Wall Israel. So Drew, why don't you give us uh, a, a story about um, the pit shark and tell us all about it. Oh, the pit shark is is great. I was just talking before. It's it really is good. You know, it's a, you can do so many different. Oh, first I I, I do want to say I really enjoyed listening to Dick. It's it's a pleasure to listen to you. It's been a while since I've talked to you, and it was just great listening to you. 
Um, as for the pit shock, you can do everything on that thing. You can do about seven exercises, and you can you can do uh, deadlifts on it. You can do hip belt squats. Uh, you can do some prone rows on there. The machine is a the machine is really good. It has a free weight feel, and yet it's balanced. So. It's safe, but at the same time, it's a challenge. And the bars that he that he sells with it, the knurling is fantastic. You won't even need chalk. Uh, I just wanted to say this about you know about equipment. When I first started lifting, I had the, um, you know, I I lifted. I I started lifting in a gym that was insane. So my first experience with lifting was, you know, I had not a clue what to do because I remember a guy asking me to spot him. And, you know, he had another guy also. He called the guy over to spot him. He had 800 on a squat bar. And he said to me, just uh, just give me a spot. It's going to be easy. And he went down one and a half inches, maybe two inches, stood up erect and said, was I below parallel? And, you know, I had, a, I had maniacs. Another guy, another guy weighed 180 pounds. And he had 650 pounds on the bar, and, and I wouldn't. I refused to spot him. He said he's going to set a world record in a few weeks. My friend spotted him instead. The bar went down through and almost went through his chest and hit the floor. It was. It went down so hard on him. The guy could. Be, I mean, the guy almost killed himself. He was a 320 pound bencher, maybe, and he had 650 pounds on the bench. <laughs> Literally, my friend was humping over his back and deadlifting the bar off of his. So I was, I, I was just very skeptical about spotting people because my first few experiences were so negative. Uh, one guy I spotted, you know, on a squat, jackknifed back and dropped the bar on my kneecaps. <laughs> he just literally jackknifed back. And uh, the weight wasn't that heavy. He said, he's just warming up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so you know, after after hearing people tell me these things, I got really, really skeptical about that. And I was the best thing for me was when I left that gym. But uh, uh, the last thing I want to say about the gym is one: there was another guy in the gym, and these are things I actually saw. And, and you know, and I was a beginner. A guy was doing pull downs. He was so out of control, he pulled the machine down on his head, and he, they needed to call an ambulance. He was bleeding very badly. They had to call an ambulance for him. I, I, I mean, these, this is, it was an insane gym, and, it was, and yet it was a popular gym. They had hundreds and hundreds of members coming into this place. And uh, it took me about three years to get my feet set on the ground where I knew, you know, where I started to really have an understanding of what I should be doing. The first three years were just throwaway years where I was doing multiple sets, multiple sets, burning out, resting, coming back, multiple sets again. And I didn't realize there was another way to train until I learned. And then I started to make real good progress, and I didn't go through injuries. Like, I was going through a lot of injuries also. Uh, so equipment, then the equipment got sane for me. I started to get my own equipment, and I got stuff that I really loved. I must have had about 50 different pieces over the years come through here, 60 pieces. And some of the pieces I've, you know, I've loved. Some of the pieces I get a little finicky with and sell. But I love equipment. I, I really do, and I still love equipment. So when there's a machine out there that's good, I, I really remember it. And that uh, the Pit Shark is one of the uh, few really great machines out there. Why don't you give us your top deadlift machines and your top squat machines? Right. Well, I was I was weaned. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna. Go, you know, I can judge it by by the, like the success I had in terms of growth and being weaned on different machines. I was weaned on the TK squat machine. Tom Kinney made a squat machine, and uh, Dr. Ken used to make me do 100 reps on there. <laughs> I would be, I'd be in the machine for 12 minutes squatting, and all, I, I'd hear him counting, and all of a sudden he'd stop counting. And he, you know, I'd say, what's going on? He'd say, if you don't get the depth all the way down, I'm not counting the reps. So I'd end up doing like 100, 114 <laughs> reps instead of 100. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so that machine really got me stronger, and I had had back problems, and that machine didn't hurt my back at all. So it, it enabled me to squat with a bar and enabled me to do a lot of other things because of the way the, the machine was designed. Uh, I would say uh, the deadlift machine I have now I like, uh, besides the pitch shock. I have the uh, uh, Nautilus Explode deadlift. I like it. I, I mean, it's a, it's a good machine. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy that machine. It's real good. Um, 
and I've had different de- I've had different squat machines. I've had uh, down through the down through the years, and some of them, you know, uh, the true squat I had for a while, and you know, some of them you love in the beginning, and then for whatever reasons you fall out of love with them. The true squat I I I sold. I had it for about two years, so I wouldn't count that as a. Uh, uh, one of the squat machines that I that I loved. Uh, at, at the time it came out, it was great. But then things evolve and things get better, and just it's amazing how good machines are now. I mean, there's just every time you turn around, there's some new great machine. They're improving every year, a lot. No, that's true. I mean, the machines the machines are just getting uh, a lot of them are getting better and better, and uh, you know, just like uh, the original Nautilus equipment was a breakthrough. That stuff was a, a miracle when they first went. Arthur Jones came out with the with a lot of the, uh, I remember the, the Nautilus, the original Nautilus equipment. Had I been around at that time and of age, I would have been foaming at the mouth to get that stuff. You know, it was just, it was just such a breakthrough. Then other companies down through the years, you know, interestingly enough, they he hasn't been surpassed yet with, with the ideas and with the with the actual advantage of variable resistance. The other companies just copied, and now they have an idea of what they're doing. But his stuff was as good as anything today. I, I mean, he came out with a line that was a little that I, actually I don't think he came out with this line. Afterwards, his son came out with a leverage line with Kim Wood and. Uh, that was uh, that was hard, hard equipment. You know, we really uh, the leg press was tough. You know, you get seated in that leg press, you get a little compressed. But the it was still it was still a breakthrough. All this stuff was breakthrough equipment. Before that, they didn't have equipment that uh, people just wanted to you know you'd want to use once you feel how it how it felt. Arthur's original stuff was just dy- dynamic. Why don't you go over uh, all the different stuff right now that you have? in your uh in your basement because you got about what 17 machines down there yeah i got about that you know it's uh i have the uh well i have that i have that bench press you know the uh explode nautilus explode bench press and i have a i have coming a nautilus explode shoulder press and i have a power rack uh i also I also have a reverse hyperextension, which I really love. When my back is bothering me a little bit, I get on the Louis Simmons hyperextension, and I, I find it really does help me. It's a, it's a really good piece. Uh, and then, of course, I have the Pit Shark, uh, and um, have a I have <laughs> I have a few hammer pieces. I have a I have um, the hammer. I have a hammer uh, a bench press, which is uh, tough. It's a tough machine. It's leveraged so that it's really difficult. Um, but I, I, li- I like it. I, you know, I like using it. And uh, I have then Powernetics was a company that I really got involved with because I really enjoyed their stuff. And uh, I, they, they make a machine, uh, you know, the Dominator, which does more for your obliques than anything I've ever seen. You get on that machine and work hard on it and do 20 reps side to side each side gets worked your obliques get hammered and they get i mean you and it, and you do not get a bad back from using the machine there's no low back involvement where you're going to injure your low back but your obliques become so strong that in rotational movements you're you're 50 60 70 pounds stronger in rotational movements my lifts went up dramatically as soon as i as soon as i started using that machine and I, I built up. I was really, you know, I get crazy with, with certain stuff, and I and I'll I'll do very high numbers, like once a month. I would do a set of 100 reps on there once a month, and literally my hands my hands would almost be bleeding on, on each hand. I'd be pulling on that thing, and I would take as heavy a weight as I could. And I got over, I got up over 400 pounds on there, rotating from side to side, and. <laughs> My obliques were super strong from using it. I, I don't use it. I haven't used it as much lately, but I'm going to go back to using it. It's a fantastic machine. And I also have another machine from Powernetics called the Attacker. The Attacker, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a machine where you're really throwing your whole body into it like a lineman. It's like you're playing the line and you're, uh, let's say you're an um, offensive lineman and you're extending your arms out and driving into it like you're driving into a, an opposing football player. And it's a fun machine, but it's also very effective. It gets you very strong. It really, uh, 
it really works. It's a, it's a type of piece that, um, you know, uh, once you're in and then using it, you see the, you see how your triceps and how your, your hips get much stronger using that machine. Uh, I also have the, a leg press, which I think is the best leg press I ever, I ever, you know, used. And I'm, I'm very happy that I have it. It's the Avenger leg press. And they stopped making the Avenger line. Medic stopped making the Avenger line. But that particular piece, that leg press, is fantastic. It has a double strength curve. So you push hard, and it gets heavy, heavy, heavy at the top. Then there's a fall off, and it gets heavy at the bottom again. You've you got to finish with your, your butt gets involved. You've got to really push down on it at the end. There's no low back compression. The back, the back is really in a safe position, and the machine... Uh, the machine is great. I mean, it really is a great leg. I've had a lot of leg presses. Um, I've had the hammer leg presses, and I enjoyed them. They're good. Uh, you know, it's, so it's not like the, there's just one leg press to get, but that one, that one is exceptional. It really is a great one. And, um, you know, I've had a Nautilus. I had a Nautilus leg press explode, a Nautilus. And, uh, you know, I liked it, but you can't stay down in the machine. There's no, they didn't have shoulder pads on there, so you kind of rise up when you do the reps. So that one, that one I wasn't crazy about. Uh, but I'm always looking at machines. One of the things is when I go online, I, I look up the companies, different companies, and I'm looking at the machines. Some of the machines are really interesting. I have a friend who has a uh, – I, I haven't seen what it even looks like. He has a, chest, he has a, a bench press machine where you bench standing up. <laughs> and you can't get the and the the machine you can't get hurt under it. The bar, the bar is somehow uh, taken off. The pressure is taken off you when you fail. Sounds uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. There's like a what, foot what, pedal. What's the company something. that makes that? I'll find out for you because I haven't, I, I haven't, I haven't seen it. It's a, it's um, it's very heavy duty. It's like it's it, the gauge on it is, it's, you know, it could take a grenade and it would it would explode and the machine would still be standing there. In a nutshell, because we've got a couple of minutes left, yeah. but if you were going to if you were going to give some uh, some advice to a young athlete like a high school football player just starting out, what would it be? Well, it would be it would be this. It would be to basically, you know, not to play when you have. Firstly, not to play when you when you play in pain. You wait until you don't have that pain. Because young people, they want to go go go, and they feel a lot of times they think there's pressure coming down, and there is pressure coming down sometimes from coaches. So I would say that overtraining is, is a big issue too. Not to overtrain, to do like to do three or four core movements a workout, and that's all you have to do. I mean, my workouts take six minutes, seven minutes, and that's the end of my workout. I do two movements, and I'll do that twice a week: two movements and two movements, and that just rotates a bench, a, a deadlift, and a squat with a with a pressing movement, and that's it. I rotate it. So I would tell a young person they wouldn't believe me. But I would tell a young person to train really brief, make the workout really brief, so you have your energy, you don't burn out, and you feel get and you're getting and you get stronger and more injury free by training brief. They're also going to get stronger without the injuries. So I would tell them to really, really watch their bodies and not listen to every adult who tells you, you know, play through the pain, because a lot of times that pain is in, indicative that it's a serious problem and it gets worse if they if they don't pay attention, and that includes with weightlifting. Yeah. Drew, thank you for joining us tonight. Dick, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank and, you for uh, having me, Bob. Uh, you're welcome. Thank, hope thank hope you, you can come back next week. Yeah, and, All uh, right. Thank you to the listeners. Thanks for joining us. Don't be a flamingo. You have to do your squats. Don't be a flamingo. Real lifters work their legs. That's going to do it for this edition of Natural Strength Night on MindForceRadio.com. Please bookmark that website, MindForceRadio.com. Bob is always looking for new writers for NaturalStrength.com who are old school hardcore, write with passion, and have a strong anti-steroid stance. He also wants your training questions so they can be answered on the show. Please send your articles and training questions to Bob at mindforceradio at earthlink.net. Thanks for listening. See you next time.